We are just going to do the fractions on question number three. He says that we are going to um, do three over four minus two over three in parentheses, and then plus one half plus one third, and then we are going to simplify the result if possible. All right. So that's pretty much what question number three is saying. So let me write down down on my uh, paper. Three over four minus two third in parentheses, plus one half plus one third. Okay, so we're just going to deal with the parentheses uh, first. And the first parentheses, I have 3 over 4 minus 2 over 3. Unfortunately, they don't have the same denominator. So uh, we are going to uh, make them have the same denominator first, of course. All right, so let's make a note. Take a look of 4 and 3. The least common multiple of 4 and 3 is 12. Okay. So what we are going to do is, I would like to change both fractions to something over 12, something over 12. On the first fraction, I had 3 over 4. So just look at the denominator and ask ourselves, 4 times what will be 12? 4 times 3 will be 12. So let me make a note right there. 4 times 3 gives us 12. And I will multiply by 3 on the top. To this 3 in black. So 3 times 3, you get 9. For the second fraction in the parentheses, 3 times 4 is equal to 12, so I'm going to multiply by 4 to the 3. Likewise, multiply by 4 on the top to the 2. 2 times 4 is equal to 8. Okay? So within the first parentheses, once we have the same denominator, this turns out to be just 9 minus 8, which is 1 over 12. Once on the top, and the denominator 12 stays the same. But notice that I'm just doing the first part, right? This is just my first part of the question. And now I have to work out this um, addition of the fractions. And again, they don't have the same denominator. So we have to make that happen first. Let me bring down the plus sign right here. And put a parentheses. And again, the lowest common multiple of 2 and 3 is 6. Okay, so I want to change these two fractions to blank over 6, blank over 6. Notice that 2 times 3 will be 6. So multiply by 3 on the top as well. 1 times 3 is 3. And for this one, 3 times 2 is equal to 6. I will multiply by 2 on the top as well. And 1 times 2 is equal to 2. Alright, now we have the same denominator. To add, the denominator doesn't change. And then we are just going to do 3 plus 2, which is 5. And then I'm going to take 5 over 6 right here. And then earlier we got 1 over 12. We are going to add them up together. Again, we must have the same denominator. We must have the same denominator. And it's possible to make both fractions something over 12. Because uh, if we multiply by 2 to the 6, if you multiply by 2 to the 6, 2 times 6 is 12, right? And then you multiply by 2 on the top, 5 times 2 is 10. We just need to make change of the second fraction because the first fraction, it's already 1 over 12. When we add, again, at the top, 1 plus 10 is 11. So 11, the denominator doesn't change. 11 over 12. But notice, pay attention to the question. It says that um, if you calculate these uh, fractions and answer reduced to the simplest form, and take a look, 11 over 12, is it possible to find a number that goes into 11 and 12 uh, evenly? Uh, the answer is no to that. So this is the simplest form. Right? 11 over 12, it's the simplest form. I want to make a note. In simplest form already. And once it's in the simplest term, simplest form, what is the denominator of the resulting fraction? Right, that's the question, and we're only looking at the denominator. So we're only looking at the 12, right? 
we're only looking at the 12 for the answer. Denominator of my answer is 12. So that's answer choice.